Good afternoon. What did you want to be when you were young? A teacher? A doctor? A lawyer? Me, I wanted something simple. I want to be an astronaut. <laughs> but obviously, I'm still here on Earth. Well, at least for now. But what I wanted to be, really, is a scientist, an inventor, someone who can create things. You see, I had a childhood hero growing up, a well-known scientist across the world. His accomplishments in robotics and astrophysics inspired me and shaped me to become who I am today. He's Dexter, boy inventor from the, from the cartoon show Dexter's Laboratory. Whatever Dexter wanted, he just made it inside his very own laboratory in his room. But sadly, the opposite is true for Filipino students. Only 13% of Philippine schools have science and computer laboratories, leaving 19 million Filipino students without access to hands-on learning. Compare this to the standards of other countries. In England, computer science is mandatory for ages 5 to 16. In China, children are exposed to coding well before they reach preschool. Preschool. Meanwhile, it was reported in the Philippines that 52% of our IT graduates cannot even be hired for programming work. Without these facilities, we are slowly becoming a society without science. We have lawmakers who believe that condoms cannot prevent STDs, that GMOs are poison, and that vaccines cause autism. Without hands-on learning to enforce fundamental scientific principles in children, they will believe anything. And you know what's a million times worse than having no science? It is having wrong science. Let me share with you a story of one person I know for a very long time. And let's just say he isn't the smartest person I've known. In kindergarten, he had to repeat, he had to apply for another school. He got rejected. In grade school, he repeated grade one. And in high school, he failed most of his science subjects. But then, something wonderful happened. In his lab classes, he would finish his experiments perfectly in the head of his class. Back in the classroom, he can now understand, understand the underlying scientific principles, and he can now pass his exams and pass his subjects. He, when he was younger, a teacher once told his parents that there was no hope for this child. Now, little did she know that the same hopeless child would become one of the Philippines' first aerospace engineers. His name is Paolo, and he's standing in front of you right now. This is the power of hands-on learning. Now I want to share with you my unforgettable learning experience, Duata One. Duata One is the Philippines' first microsatellite. The development started way back in December 2014 and ended just a year after. On March 23 of last year, it was launched into space, and the month after that was deployed from the International Space Station. Currently, it is orbiting the Earth and already taking pictures of the Philippines. As one of the most disaster-prone countries in the world, Duato One will help the Philippines in disaster management, rehabilitation, and planning. Before, we used to just buy images from other countries. This is a picture from the US Landsat 8. Now, with the, with the same location, this is a picture taken by our very own. Just beautiful. They're calling it the world's best in ter, in, in its, for its satellite scale. Now, comparing this with the world's very first image of Earth, we can say that the Philippines has definitely kept up with technology and that we are in no way left behind. Now, how does it work? The satellite orbits around the Earth numerous times, several times a day, and it rotates freely in space. But in order to capture valuable images, we need to be able to stabilize and target it towards certain points of interest. 
In this case, of course, the Philippines. After it has locked on, we can now take pictures and download them back down to Earth. On board the satellite, we have numerous components on board. We have the eyes of the satellite, which are the sensors. These measure the direction, the speed, and the location of the satellite in space. Next, we have a brain, the computer. This calculates the necessary adjustments we need to make in order to control the satellite. And lastly, we have the legs of the satellite, the motors. These allow us to control and con rotate the satellite as we wish in space. Now, upon rotating in space, the sensor data are updated, and this cycle is continuously re repeated during operation. Today, the satellite is fully functional, perfectly fine. But looking back at our one-year development in Japan, I have realized three challenges. First, first are the costs. The entire project cost a whopping 1 billion pesos in order to be funded. That includes the, the launch, the materials, and the training. Second is space. It is impossible to test the actual operation before the actual launch. And so if the satellite will fail, it will fail. And lastly, and most importantly, there is no aerospace education here in the Philippines. So if, if a student wishes to pursue this type of aerospace engineering, he or she would have to go abroad in order to pursue this technology. Without addressing these problems, space exploration cannot be sustainable. And so I came up with the Wata VR, a virtual reality satellite simulator. Now, going back to the feedback loop I showed earlier, we replaced the entire space environment and several components on board with a smartphone VR app. Similarly, we replaced the 1 billion peso satellite with a 1,000 peso microcontroller called an Arduino. And then to show you what it looks like, I'm going to demo in front of you right now. So first, we just pick up the Arduino. It's quite small. It's very affordable. It's quite easy to learn. We power it up, just like that. And we take our smartphone, smartphone and we put it in our headset, just like that, and you put it on. So this is what I can see in virtual reality. I can see the stars, I can see the Earth, and most importantly, I can see the Wata One in its full glory. Now, by entering the virtual reality environment, students can feel what it's like to be in space. And by programming the Arduino, they can control their very own virtual satellite easily and affordably. With Diwata VR, everyone can learn aerospace engineering. Of course, aerospace engineering is just one of the many subjects that we can teach in virtual reality. Last year, I founded Haraya Labs, which teaches science and technology, engineering and math to students through virtual reality. Here are some of the apps that we have been working on. Okay. Robotics is a wonderful way of introducing programming to children, as they can easily see how their code moves the robot. Unfortunately, robotics kits cost over $300, more than students can afford. And so with our virtual RoboLab, everything is provided in front of the students, everything all for free making it more accessible and affordable. Next is ChemLab. It is very hard to imagine chemistry concepts as they exist at a molecular scale. This makes lab experimentation essential in teaching chemistry to students. I myself had a challenge studying this, this subject. Now, with ChemLabs, students can now freely explore chemical reactions, you know, without having to worry about burns from fires and corrosions from hazardous chemicals. 
Next is road labs. How do you teach discipline to students? You can't. You can teach them what's wrong and what's right, but at the end of the day, discipline is experienced. 50% of our traffic is actually caused by the pedestrians and not by the drivers. And so with road labs, we teach these children how to cross roads properly by letting them cross roads properly. And with this, we hope to solve the country's uh, problems of traffic congestion. Going back to the Wata VR, this is the, my first, very first virtual reality app. I may not have been an astronaut, but I felt what it's like to be in space. I experienced what it's like to be in space. In the same way, even though only a few of us actually had the opportunity to build the Wata One, I believe that the Wata One is the achievement of every Filipino, and that every student should experience what we experienced. Duata VR was not made only to educate, but also to inspire future aerospace engineers. So by programming virtual satellites today, I am hopeful that in the future, these students will grow up to build and launch their own real satellites. Albert Einstein once said, the only source of knowledge is experience. In the beginning of my talk, I asked you, what you want them to be. Now, the common answers are lawyers, doctors, and teachers. What if I told you there are VR apps for that as well? For doctors, there are, surgical, there are surgeries on virtual cadavers. For teachers, they can teach virtual students in order to practice their lesson plans. And for lawyers, they can practice public speaking in front of a virtual audience. The best way to learn is to do. And these virtual reality apps help us realize what we, what, we become to, what we want to become to be. As an ending note, I'd like to leave you with a quote from a philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard. Life is not a problem to be solved, but a reality to be experienced. Thank you. <laughs>